do, you're, organized. you're right. You brought up social skills. This is a huge component of the teen years. I think I had mentally blocked it because it's so overwhelming to me. But let's talk about, you know, how do we help our teens on the autism spectrum with social skills? Right. So again, you have to go by assessment and what their needs are. Um, because it's all individual, right? Yeah. We, you have to keep stressing that because we in the community always say when you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. <laughs> so we have to live by that and look, where is this individual right now, today? Not where were they two years ago? Where do we want to be three weeks from now? Where are they right now? Then you can look at where do we want to get down the road. Right. Um, so you're looking at that for social skills and seeing what, what do they have strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. And then once we know what those are, then we'll basically teach them social rules. So a lot of times, literally, if they just know the rule behind what it is they're supposed to be doing, they get a lot better at it. Yeah. I've talked to some um, older individuals who um, ended up with uh, their diagnoses being removed, who are now in their 20s, and they say that they literally just live by the rules. So when they're interacting with people, they think the rule to themselves, like, oh, I'm supposed to make sure I check in with my eyes, you know, like these kind of things. Right. And that's just what they have to do. Now, eventually, I think that can become more automatic. Yes. You know and, what I mean? And, and hopefully you become more fluent. reinforcing. Yeah. Well, fluency was our, our word for the day. That was our jargon for the day. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah, where it's um, just an automatic response that's not really thought about anymore, but yeah. initially it might be thought about. Yeah. Uh, so actually, a lot of times, we might even set up things in fluency-based instruction type of formats where we get them learning to go really, really fast because, okay. unfortunately, when you're doing social skills... Mm -hmm. If you are processing and thinking everything through before you do it, you missed your opportunity a lot of times. Okay, I've never really thought about this before. How do you work on social skills with fluency? Like, give me an example. How do you do that? <laughs> um, well, we might give them, um, like, for instance, if they are going to be uh, just identifying basic emotions or something like that, uh -huh. we get them doing a certain amount of identifications per minute. Okay. And then um, maybe if we're getting them to make an inference about a picture or something, we do a certain amount per minute. Okay. If we're getting them to talk about a cause and effect, like what might happen if she this, we have, want them to come up with a bunch of different possibilities. They and don't... we tell them you've only got a minute and there's a buzzer that goes off. It's like a game show. Yeah, it's fun. That's kind of fun. We can turn them into whatever they're into. So if they love basketball, you can draw out a little basketball court like on yeah. a piece of paper. And every time they beat their timing, they get a basket. Oh. And then after a certain amount of baskets, they get to do something they want to do. So maybe oh, they like to play it. a game board or a board game with you or something uh -huh. like that. And then, of course, while we're playing our board game, we're going to work on social skills in vivo right. with them, you know, where we do social cues them. and stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of like teaching what the skill is, teaching the rules, role playing, and then capturing uh, the opportunities to do it in vivo. Okay. Can now we go back over those again a little slower? So teaching rules. Okay. And then going over it and rehearsing through role play, getting them fluent. Okay. Then setting up opportunities that are like captured in vivo where they don't necessarily know that okay. they're doing it after you've role played it. And then of course you want to get it out into with other peers and stuff like that. Now this is the harder part is because sometimes if they're mainstreamed or whatever, their peers might not even necessarily know what's going on with them. Right. And they're not going to feel comfortable with someone like me coming and hanging out with them. Right. So it's this harder is another, in the teen years. It is yeah. harder. Yeah. So there's social skills groups that right. you can do where they can practice with other peers. Here's, um, here's my issue with um, social skills groups for teens, is that the vast majority of the ones that I have found, it's a group of teenagers who are on the spectrum. And they're going to teach them social skills with other teenagers who are on the spectrum. And that's what it is. And this makes me break out into high. <laughs> <laughs> because I understand starting there, yeah. But how do we actually, isn't there, shouldn't there be, it seems like to me the perfect social skills program would be that it's a, a four week class and the first two weeks it's just kids around the autism spectrum, but the last two weeks there's another half of the class added that's all people who are not on the spectrum. Wouldn't yeah. that... I guess I'm going to start a social skills group. Wouldn't that be the thing? <laughs> or maybe I'll start that. That sounds uh, you know, But isn't that the thing? Um, I, I mean, doesn't that need to be? Am I the only person that thinks that that's crazy, that, we're on, that the vast majority of social skills programs, it's just individuals who are on the spectrum? I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, because you're only ending at the role play. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're never getting to the real thing. 
So I think that's a really good idea. That would be like saying to and people who are going to the Olympics, well, we're just going to practice in the backyard and, and, and then we're going to go to the Olympics. <laughs> By the way, another complaint I've heard about social skills is that uh, some of them are just hangouts. So you get a bunch of these people together who are all on the spectrum and you eat pizza together or you go bowling yeah. together or you play games together or something like yeah. that. But they're not actually working to teach them specific skills. Yeah. And so you have to be aware of those kinds of social skills groups as well. Yeah. You want to make sure they're actually teaching specific skills. I, yeah, it's one of those areas where, and I know that there's some good social skills um, places and we've tried to feature them here on the show. Um, but it's another one of those areas that I say, be, be buyer beware, because a lot of times it's somebody who just puts social skills on it because they want to get into your checkbook. And you gotta gotta know what you're doing. Yeah, that's a key word when you see social skills. Um, they're doing that on purpose for marketing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> trust me, because it makes all of our ears go up. Oh, they have social skills, but you gotta ask some questions. Right. Okay. So we want to make sure that they have an opportunity to work on it with peers, because yeah. otherwise, with peers that are neurotypical, otherwise we're not going to get to the point where they can, you know, be someplace on their own and put these things into practice. In some cases, we have some um, interventionists who actually look young. Yes. And they've asked the teen, would you be okay with me coming and hanging out with you and your friends on this event or whatever, and you can just introduce me as a family friend and leave it up to the teen, and the teen's like, yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah.